Hello students, so today we are going to discuss about oxoacids of halogen. Due to the high electronegativity and small size of fluorine, it forms only one oxoacid, HOF. It is known as fluoric 1 acid or hypofluorous acid. So basically it says according to the name, fluorine will be in positive oxidation state and we know that it is most electronegative element so usually it is not possible for it. So the other halogen forms several oxoacids. Most of them cannot be isolated in pure state. They are stable only in aqueous solution or in the form of their salts. The oxoacid of halogens are mentioned in 7.10 table and structures are mentioned in figure 7.8. So all of these uh, elements forms plus 1 acids that means uh, halogen will be in plus 1 oxidation state. But for fluorine we know that it is not possible so technically it is plus 1 but actual charge will be negative. Then we have plus 3, plus 5 and plus 7 oxidation state. Some of them can form certain compounds and some of them cannot. And all of them share similar type of structures. And naming scheme is already discussed so we are not going to discuss why these type of nomenclatures are mentioned for elements. So structures of this type of elements are mentioned so as we can see in hypochlorous acid we have only one OH group. In chlorous acid one OH and one double bond O in chloric one OH two double bond O in perchloric we have one OH and three triple bond O structures. So all of them has only one OH group or one hydrogen so all of them will be monobasic. Next is the interhalogen compounds that means when halogen atom combines with halogen atom. Two different halogen atoms react with each other, interhalogen compounds will be formed and they are assigned a general composition as XX dash, XX3 dash, XX5 dash and XX7 dash. Where normal X will be larger sized halogen atom and X dash will be smaller size halogen atom. That means xx dash first example can be considered x will be cl and x dash will be fluorine if you are using bromine then as a x dash we can use chlorine and fluorine if you are using iodine then we can use all of the remaining bromine chlorine and fluorine and so on so as the ratio between red eye of x and x dash increases the number of atom per molecule also increases so if we have one largest sized containing uh, halogen and smallest halogen then we can reach up to x x7 dash that means with uh, iodine and fluorine we can create x x dash 7 that means last mentioned formula and that is why we have formula if7 which contains maximum amount of atoms now how can we prepare these type of compounds? So interhalogen compounds can be prepared by direct combination or by direct action of halogen on lower interhalogen compounds. The product form depend upon the specific condition. For example, Cl2 plus F2 it produces ClF. In excess quantity you will get ClF3. Similarly I2 with Cl2 creates iCl and with excess quantity of fluorine we can create iCl3. Similarly, bromine forms BrF3 in excess it will form BrF5. Now general property of these type of compounds are mentioned here. So as we can see we have physical state, formula and structure. So all of the elements which contains only two atoms they will be usually linear. We know that it is only possible structure of the compound. So all of the x x dash 1 type of uh, formulas or compounds will be linear in structure. Then we have x x dash 3. So in this type of structure we have bent shape. And if you check the electronic configuration or hybridization of this type of element then you will get why these type of elements shows bent shape. So usually electron pair around the central halogen atom will be total 5 that means we have 5 different electron pairs so 3 of them will occupy equatorial bonds and 2 will be on axial bonds so you will get trigonal bipyramidal arrangement of electron pairs but some of them 
will be un uh, non bonding electron pairs that means we have lone pairs present in central element and that's why they do not participate in shape of molecule and that's why you will get bent t shape next uh, x x dash 5 it has square pyramidal shapes so again same thing can be considered if it contains five electron pairs or or five attachments and it has square pyramidal shape so it represents it has total six electron pairs and one of them will be non-bonding electron pair or lone pair of central atom and that's why shape will be square pyramidal and last is x x7 dash so this is a bit unusual shape because usually we do not see these type of structures and it is exceeded the valency of uh, our regular hybridization that means in our regular hybridization we learn up to d2 sp3 or sp3 uh, sp3 d2 that means total six electron pairs around the central element but in this case as we can see we have seven electron pairs so it is uh, not common for us to understand this structure but we can uh, see its electronic configuration and then we can understand it so let's discuss all of the structures step by step we will use example of iodine because it can form almost every interhalogen compound with fluorine so let's discuss first if so basic electronic configuration of iodine will be ns2 np because it is halogen element but it also contains d orbital just like the chlorine or bromine it also contains d orbital that means in case of iodine we have 5s2 5p5 and 5d with zero electron so usually we do not represent it so if we check the electronic configuration of iodine initial electronic configuration will be something like this we have two electrons in s orbital and total five electrons in p orbital something like this so one fluorine will combine with the iodine here and it donates its electron pair here so now we have sp3 type of hybridization so around the iodine we have total one two 3 and 4 electron pairs but arrangement will be tetrahedral but only one is bond pair and all the other threes are lone pair so that's why only one attachment will be present at any one of the electron pair so let's place bond pair here and all the three will be lone pair so as you can see we have a linear molecule so that's why all of the two atom containing interhalogens are linear then let's talk about if3 so in this case initial electronic configuration of iodine will be same 5s2 5p5 but as we know to form three bonds it needs to unpair one of the bond pairs so let's say this bond pair will split and electron will jump in d orbital like this and now four uh, sorry three fluorines can form bond with iodine so as we can see we have one two three four and five electron pairs like this so five electron pairs that means around the iodine we have five electron pairs arranged in trigonal bipyramidal shape so three electron pairs will be present at the corner of triangle and two will be present on axis something like this so that means we can attach elements like this these three will be uh, equatorial bond and two will be axial bond like this but as we know we have only three bond pairs and two will be non-bonding electron pairs which usually do not participate in structure so let's remove one of the electron pair present here uh, and one of the bond pair present here so instead we will place lone pairs here so now we have t shaped molecule okay so this is t shaped molecule now to create if5 we need total five unpaired electrons so all of the electron present in p orbital will split 
so we have five unpaired electrons and five chlorine atoms will combine with it so we have total five bond pairs and one non-bonding electron pair so total number of electron pairs we have six of them so around the iodine we have something something uh, like this type of structure so six electron pairs will align octahedrally like this so we have octahedral structure but as we know one of them is non-bonding electron pair so we have to remove one electron pair as a bond pair to lone pair so this bottom electron pair is now lone pair so only four electron pairs present one two three and four here and one on the top these will be participate in structure so this four will create a square and we have one electron pair or element at the top which rep uh, represents pyramidal shape so that's why when five elements are attached with central element it forms pyramidal square pyramidal shape and in this case hybridization will be s p3 d2 as we can see here we have one s orbital with lone pair 3p orbital with bond pairs and two d orbitals with bond pairs so sp3d2 structure and in case of if7 all of the seven electrons of iodine that means two in s orbital and five in p orbital will split and it will resemble something like this we have total seven unpaired electrons one two three four five six and seven so all of them will be unpaired and with all of these seven single electrons seven fluorines will attach something like this so this type of hybridization is not discussed in our textbook so it doesn't mean it do not exist but it is not in our syllabus but still we can see we have s p3 d3 type of hybridization and this hybridization gives us pentagonal bipyramidal so how pentagonal bipyramidal shape looks so assume a pentagon around the central iodine like this we have total five elements present around the iodine like this so at the corner of this pentagon we have five fluorines and let's say this pentagon is perpendicular with the plane of board or plane of screen and one fluorine is perpendicular with this pentagonal plane from the top side and one is perpendicular from the bottom side so this is called pentagonal bipyramidal shape that means when we connect this top fluorine with all of the fluorine with the uh, present at the corner of pentagon it creates pentagonal pyramid just like octahedral shape which creates two pyramids attached from bottom similarly this creates two pentagonal pyramids attached from top and bottom so these are covalent molecules and are diamagnetic in nature and they are volatile solids or liquids at 298 kelvin except cf uh, clf which is a gas their physical properties are intermediate between those of constitute uh, constituent halogen except their melting and boiling points are little higher than expected and simple reason is this type of molecules because of a uh, different type of elements attached will be polar and polar molecules have stronger attraction towards each other and that's why it has higher melting boiling points their chemical reactions can be compared with individual halogens in general interhalogen compounds are more reactive than halogen except fluorine this is because xx dash bonds in the interhalogen is weaker than xx bonds in halogen except fluorine fluorine bonds because all of the interhalogen compounds contains different type of atoms and that's why they lack symmetry symmetry uh, plays important role in stability if molecules are symmetrical then they will get some extra stability and in uh, interhalogen compounds they do not have stability because one of the molecule is smaller and second is bigger so that's why they have weaker bonds but they are not uh, as weak as fluorine because fluorine has 
repulsion of electron pairs and that's why its stability decreases. All this undergoes hydrolysis giving the halide ion derivative from the smaller halogen and hypohalite, halide, halide and perhalite ion ions derivative from larger halogens. So as mentioned XX dash plus H2O gives XX, uh, HX dash and HOX. Their molecular structures are very interesting which can be explained on the basis of Vesper theory. The XX3 compounds have the bent T shape XX5 square pyramidal and XF7 has pentagonal bipyramidal structure. From next lecture we will discuss about group 18 elements.